Hello, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, this is uh, part three uh, on the topic of Calvinism. Uh, the subject of this talk is uh, the origins of Calvinism. I think this will be a, a great surprise to many of you. Um, the Calvinism didn't start with Calvin. It really goes back to Augustine and uh, and his his debates he was having on theology and how he came to this, these same conclusions. So let me just uh, reference a few things and, and then I'll comment on this. Uh, it says, a dissertation was written to explore the potential Gnostic influence of Augustine's doctrine of predestination. Uh, Augustine was from lived from 354 to 430 A.D. Uh, John Calvin lived from 1509 to 1564. Calvin admits that his theology uh, was already developed by Augustine. So the question is, how did Augustine arrive at his view of predestination, which is quite the opposite of what was publicly taught within the church for the first 300 years of early church history. Now, I'm going to repeat this last part because it's very important you understand this, and I doubt that you were aware of this. This doctrine of Calvin and Augustine on predestination it says it is quite the opposite of what was publicly taught within the church for the first 300 years of early church history. So the apostles didn't teach it. The early church fathers didn't teach it. Not until Augustine developed it into the, in the middle of the 4th century. It should be noted that Augustine was uh, a Gnostic Manichaean. I don't know if I'm pronouncing Manichaean correctly. It's spelled M-A-N-I-C-H-A-E-A-N. I'll call it Manichaean. So Augustine was a Gnostic Manichaean for nearly a decade before converting to Catholicism. So he was a Gnostic and then he was a Catholic. Now obviously this should throw up a lot of red flags to a lot of people watching this video now. Generally, it's thought that Augustine developed his theology on predestination after debating with Pelagius. That's in uh, uh, 15, uh, uh, 354. Pelagius lived from 354 to 420. Um, but this, the author that I'm quoting from here, Cam Loon E. Lee, uh, who wrote this dissertation, he suggests that it was de developed from Augustine's debates with the Manichaeans in terms of the inevitability of personal evil and divine cosmic ordering, or divine sovereignty, if you will. So, uh, Augustine was debating with the Manichaeans about this subject of sovereignty. And in those, while those debates were taking place, this is the origins of uh, Augustine's uh, conclusions on predestination. The Manichaeans represent the Persian branch of Gnosticism. And they, they taught both determinism and depravity. Determinism and depravity. <laughs> two really uh, key words in Calvinism today that everything's determined it's already predestined and the depravity that man is in, even incapable of, of, of making decisions however their determination was based upon dualistic mythology and also maintained a carnal outlook on bodily pleasure so that's that's the Manichaeans, the Gnostic Manichaeans. 
and that's where Augustine came from. Uh, now, Fortunatus was a Manichaean Gnostic with whom Augustine had been debating. So the biblical proof text, uh, did, did Augustine witness of the Gnostics in their debates? So what biblical proof text did Augustine witness of the Gnostics in their debates? Virtually all of the familiar proof texts evident in the Calvinist versus Arminian debates today were present in Augustine's fully developed view on predestination. So all of the arguments that we have going on today, all the verses that are going back and forth, uh, trying to prove Arminianism or Calvinism, they were the same proof texts that were being used in these debates. So this is an ancient argument, but it originated in the fourth century. Is the origin of evil one's voluntary defection from God, or is the origin of evil God's predetermination that evil is a creation of God that is to be manifested in order for God to display the sum total of his various attributes. So, did evil come about because man had free will and he rebelled against God, which is, that's what I think, and uh, that's what uh, many Christians believe. Uh, or could it be that uh, um, uh, no, it wasn't based upon man's voluntary defection from God, but it was God predetermined that evil must exist so that all of his uh, various attributes could be displayed. That's the, that's the question. Uh, but for a solution as to why one is chosen and another not, Augustine has to appeal to, quote, God's secret arrangement. God's secret arrangement. Now, that sounds an awful lot like uh, Gnostic secret knowledge. It sounds a lot like um, the... Um, What's the group that, uh, that uh, the Masons, the Masons are all based upon acquiring secret knowledge. So this is similar to Masonic thought and similar to uh, Gnostic ideas that it's secret knowledge that man needs to require. And God has this secret reason that uh, he's predestined some people to hell and some people to heaven. So the question is this, did Augustine take the mythology of Gnostic determinism and bring it under the pale of Christian orthodoxy simply by tinkering with it, by removing the mythology, dualistic component, and making the cause of evil entirely the product of monistic divine cosmic ordering or otherwise stated divine sovereignty? Is August, uh, Augustinian predestination the Christian link to Gnosticism? Insofar as the theological determination, that appears to be the case. So what, what um, Calvinists teach today is the sovereignty of God, being that God actually predetermines and controls everything. Um, can be traced back to these conclusions from this Gnosticism. Uh, and so what is sovereignty? I've addressed this in earlier videos, but the Calvinist makes the mistake of thinking that God is only sovereign if he actually controls everything. If God is actually making you think the thoughts you think right now, making you speak the next words that come out of your mouth, making you do every action of your entire life is actually controlled. That's how a Calvinist sees sovereignty. But real sovereignty for God is God is so powerful that he can cause anything to happen. He's able to. 
He has the power and ability because of this sovereignty of God. But God is so powerful that he does not have to control everything. He chooses instead to give man free will because he's so great he can even save people in spite of man's free will. And it's only through will, free will that God can achieve what he really wants. And that's a love relationship with mankind. You see, if God created as simply as robots where every thought, uh, word, and deed was controlled by God, we we're nothing but robots or puppets, we couldn't love God. And that's not what well, God, God does not want robots and puppets. God wants uh, creatures that actually love him. And you can only have love if there's free will. It cannot be imposed on someone uh, like a robot. It's not true love. In fact, when you impose love on someone, they call that rape. So it's this perverted idea of predestination and sovereignty that is traced back to the 4th century with Augustine and uh, the Manichaeans. So who among the early church theologians prior to Augustine taught Augustinian predestination? It appears to be a theology that was born out of Augustine's research of Gnosticism. But was this kind of cosmic order in support of or in contradiction to the theology of the first 300 years of church history? The theological climate in Augustine's uh, time fostered free will and responsibility. Free will of man, the responsibility of man. That was what was commonly believed before Augustine introduced this perversion. Determinism would have gone against the tide at the beginning of the church. All right, so that's it for part three. Uh, now you understand the true origins of the doctrines of Calvin. Calvin didn't invent it. Augustine didn't really even invent it entirely. He drew it from the, the Gnostics and, and uh, a combination of Gnostic beliefs and Augustine's conclusions. So, uh, part four is coming up, and part four is... Uh, Calvinism destroys God's justice. Thank you for watching. I bless you. Rest in the love and grace of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.